College Cup are seeking out their first ever title. But for, for, for Florida State and Virginia Tech, they are no strangers. So familiar with each other, it's like deja vu, because just under a month ago, I was right here in the same stadium, same two teams, but for the ACC final, and it was a game largely dominated by Florida State. So this time around, Virginia Tech has said, look, we have got to bring more intensity the, into the game, in particular, get our lightning fast senior leading goal scorer, Jasmine Reeves, more involved in the game. Because when Jasmine Reeves is on, she is a player that can change a game with her pace. She gets in behind defenses. She's great on the counterattack, and that is what Virginia Tech will be looking for today. For Florida State on the other side, the Icelandic international, Dagny Brynja's daughter, will run the show for the Seminoles. She scored all three goals against Virginia Tech this season in their two games, and this one in particular in the ACC final was the game winner, and she's a player that has... Mark Corey and her head coach has described is a woman among girls. She's that good. The nation's best talent on display. Coming up next, we'll take a look at starting lineups, the opening kickoff. It's semifinal number one, Virginia Tech taking on Florida State. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. And in part by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Millions of people grow up in a family of immigrants. But not everyone stops at nothing to reach their dream. Even fewer have the patience, passion, and perseverance to win the Women's College Cup would mean everything, not only to our team, but to Hokie Nation as well, and everyone who supported us throughout the season. We appreciate everyone just constantly being there and rooting us on. Our hard work is finally paying off, and it's really exciting. To win the Women's College Cup would mean a lot to the team. We sacrificed a lot. Everyone had been away from their family for a long time. We worked hard, and this is the biggest honor in college soccer, so it would be amazing to be the best team in the U.S. Welcome back to Wake Med Soccer Park, Cary, North Carolina. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Foudy. Virginia Tech seeking out their first national title in any sport. And there was Mark McCrickorian, the head coach of Florida State. Third consecutive College Cup final he has led his team to seeking out the national title. We'll take a look at the starting lineup for the Seminoles. Florida State going in its 4-5-1 lineup and pay particular attention to Cassie Coleman. ACC Defender of the Year, one of the best center backs in the game, under 20 World Cup champion as well. And for Virginia Tech, they're going to be in their 4-4-2. They play a pinched in diamond, so it's a very compact midfield. And Dale Colpitz, their goalkeeper, has been phenomenal this season. Canadian under 20 World Cup player as well. Excellent all season. Virginia Tech coached by Chugger Adair in his third season, has guided Tech to the Sweet 16 before, but this is the farthest they have gotten. He's been an assistant coach here, and it is the third meeting between these two teams this year. Let's take a look. This is the Northwestern Mutual planning for success. And here's some keys for Virginia Tech. Get Reeves and Meyer. We talked about Reeves in the open. Ashley Meyer is their central midfielder. Get her more involved because she's going to link the team. She was quiet in their ACC final game. And most important for Virginia Tech, be aware of Dogney Brynja's daughter because she can take over a game. For the Hokies, sorry, for the Seminoles, make Hokies utilize the flanks and get wide and don't leave them sp themselves exposed to counter because that is where Virginia Tech can be so good. Virginia Tech in maroon, Florida State in white. Your referee is Frank Anderson. Beautiful, spacious field here. Tremendous length and width, so uh, it's obvious uh, there's good space here for the skilled player here today, Julie. Yeah, and Florida State has said over and over, we love that big field in those flanks. So M Muriel Tiernan trying to get in. She's also got 11 goals. 22 goals between Tiernan and Reeves up front. 
for Virginia Tech. Trevor Dare, their head coach, said, look, we're going to come out. We're going to push the game here and try to go at Florida State. And they are here early. That's a dangerous looking cross. And just helping it wide was Kelsey Weiss. So a very positive start here for Trevor Adair and Virginia Tech. Tiernan, a chance to make it one. Weiss with a huge save off her line early. And as you mentioned, Glenn, exactly what Chugger Adair and Virginia Tech wanted to do in these first opening minutes. They said they needed to bring more intensity. They felt that they were flat in that ACC final. They wanted to bring some energy. And this is the dangerous tandem of Tiernan and Reeves because those two are starting to play so well together. Tiernan, just a freshman, they mentioned yesterday that it's taken them this whole season to get comfortable with how they play off each other. And boy, what success they've had with those 22 goals between them. Isabella Schmidt now from Germany. Direct ball headed away. Good strong defensive header from Jordan Coburn of Virginia Tech. Nine is the first team All-American, Cassie Kalman. And that will go for a goal, goal kick to Virginia Tech. But what a positive start for them. In the college game, the clock counts down. Unlimited substitution, but if you come out in the first half, you cannot re-enter. In the second half, you can. And Julie, so many... Uh, People have mentioned that, you know, this this group of four teams at the final four here at uh, the NCAA College Cup certainly are, are teams that are technical, aesthetic. Uh, we're expecting a lot of good build-up play and a lot of value placed on the ball here in this tournament. Yeah, I think three of the four, Virginia Tech is, is a little bit more direct. They're going to play a little bit more physical, but Florida State loves to hold the ball. Virginia, they've been compared to the Barcelona style of the men. You have... UCLA, who has danger in all those three lines. So, yes, you have a more aesthetically pleasing style then. Awkward clear here. Still loose at the top of the box. Of course, once this passing rhythm gets going for Florida State, they can be extremely dangerous. They're bringing in Jamia Fields here on the right side, who just gets up and down the right. Great attacking option from Alta Loma, California. And Fields, number four, brings such energy. She's on both sides of the ball. She's in behind. She gets all over the field. First corner of the game to Florida State. Coming over to take it is Megan Campbell. And she will... Uh, make this the long throw and she has a throw that is like a corner kick though driven into the near post header way good defensive header megan campbell who just threw it in with her long throw she leads the team with 12 assists and you can see why that is such a weapon for florida state it's like having a corner kick or a set piece driven in every time she gets a throw in weiss long direct ball headed away by coburn schmidt so after initial push from Virginia Tech now, Florida State trying to get some confidence through passing here. Megan Campbell. All the way back to the goalkeeper, Dale Colpitz for Virginia Tech, who's had some cold-like symptoms, but seems to be uh, fine for this one from New Brunswick, Canada. How about that? Less than a goal a game being conceded by Dale Colpitz of Virginia Tech. They were a bit worried earlier in the week because they thought she almost had strep throat. Put her on IVs. But they said she's perked right up the end of this week. Kayla Hahn switches this one away from pressure. 13 is Kristen Grubka, who's got three goals from Melbourne, Florida. Here comes Schmidt now. Such a great option getting forward from the right back position. And right now, Florida State painting some pretty pictures on this beautiful surface via the pass. Squared it back, and this will be the game's first corner. And a wonderful illustration of the space on the flanks. Schmidt on the right side, that's the right back for Florida State getting forward. 
and then switching it across. And that is going to be key to Florida State today. Can they switch the point of, of attack so fast? Because those four in the midfield, Virgin, Virginia Tech, are all clustered in that diamond. So those flanks wide open. Schmidt to take the corner. Bends it in towards the six. Great opportunity in the air there for Grubka. Couldn't get ahead on it, but still Florida State. Again, driven to the far post. Brynja's daughter was there. Whip back in again. The header took a deflection off the post. Would have been an own goal. So Virginia Tech avoids one here. Only minutes into this one. And this is something you just can't allow against Florida State because they have so many attacking options in there. So many who can head it. Megan Campbell again with the long throw here. And she will absolutely whip this in. This time it goes a little beyond the front post. It's headed away. Virginia Tech battling for their lives here. And you know what's interesting, when you have a player like Megan Campbell who can take these long throws, you know how teams are always talking about you don't want to give up fouls in the box for free kicks. This is the same thing. You don't want to give up those long throw-ins because it's like a set piece. Here comes Campbell again. The third time she's made the trek across the field to take this long throw, and this time it comes into the near post. Second ball has to be defended. Virginia Tech succeeds. And they just, Florida State just puts Grubka, their center back, their tall target type, right in the mix of that when Campbell's taking those throws. Such a dangerous option for them. Florida State has never lost to Virginia Tech. 13 wins and one tie in 14 matches. Jamia Fields now. Here's Fields, and she can drive towards the end line. Defended well, they hold her up, knocks it back to Schmidt. Schmidt to the far post, overhit it. And it will be a goal kick to Virginia Tech here as we tick down towards the 36 minute mark. Mark Krikorian saying Florida State not as athletic as last year, but they've got great balance. Here's another look at that goal coming across, and you can see Seifers almost getting a hand on it. Virginia Tech, one, very lucky that didn't deflection and go in. Two, very lucky they didn't get called for a handball on that one. Best chance of the game. Here's Weiss, has a wonderful kicking game. And Weiss has a 0 0.48 goals against average for Florida State. Weiss has such a good kicking game. She has six assists <laughs> with these driven 50-yard balls. Bring your daughter from Iceland. Very international flavor to Florida State. Mark Krikorian goes all over the world looking for players. Eight internationals, four of them starting on this roster. Brynja's daughter, she's in a great place. Oh, tried to bring in the feet of her countrywoman. Floresville daughter up front. And those two, Julie, speak Icelandic on the field. It's the only place they're allowed to do that, according to coach Mark Krikorian. Right. Dagny Brynja's daughter was telling us yesterday that they love to do that to confuse the back line. They can strategize. Again, another tremendously long throw from Campbell. In the box, it's headed on. And ghosting into that penalty area was Brynja's daughter, who's got 14 goals and four assists on the year for Florida State. Danielle King now for Virginia Tech. Kelsey Loopy now. 
Fields with some good defensive work for Florida State. Seven tournament appearances for Virginia Tech. Trying to battle through that was Jasmine Reeves. He's going to get called for the foul. First team All-American, Jasmine Reeves. And here's a matchup I just can't wait to watch all game. Jasmine Reeves against number nine, Cassie Coleman for Florida State. And these two are going to go at it. Jasmine Reeves, one of the best strikers in the collegiate game. And Cassie Coleman, arguably the best center back in the game right now. Both first team All-Americans. Megan Campbell's gonna see that out for Florida State. They'll get the throw. And again, look at that long throw. Turns a defense. And Florida State has won it back. Gorville's daughter won it back. Now. Fields is on here if they can get it switched. They do, they pick out Schmidt. The, the nice thing about Florida State as well is how they get those outside backs so involved. A 4-5-1 only works if you can send those flanks, those wingers up, if you can get those outside backs going. And often it turns into like a 4-2-4 for Florida State. Fields whips in across to the near post, held by Cole Pitts. Good safe hands from the Virginia Tech goalkeeper. Three straight College Cup appearances for Mark Recoring in Florida State. What pressure do you think is there on them to get to this final and, and finally win an NCAA title? They're one in five in that semifinal, so they've only got through that semifinal one. So I think there is some pressure there to get over that hump. That's been the last remaining hurdle for them because they can dominate teams, they can hold the ball, they can possess. Can they get through to that final and then finish it off? They lost in the final in 2007 to USC. Only time they got to the big game. They're one game away from it today against the very game Virginia Tech to the end line was Reeves who goes down. Who was already showing us real glimpses of danger and a real turn of pace. Kelsey Weiss off the goal kick here. Florida State in the quarterfinals beating Boston College 4-0. Virginia Tech getting over on Duke 3-0. Three out of four teams in the NCAA College Cup representing the ACC. Only UCLA from the Pac-12. Schmidt knocks it inside. Bring his daughter. Blocked by Thorva's daughter. Bring his daughter now. The full Icelandic international will knock it back to Schmidt. Fields cutting inside. Good work defensively. And now Virginia Tech. Antolino will knock it back to Coburn now. Coburn, the only returning starter for Virginia Tech, a sophomore. And I think one of the challenges for Virginia Tech is when they're playing with those four in the middle that are pinched in versus Florida State's five, is you got to get help in there. You got to get some numbers. So those outside backs have to help on attack. They got to start getting forward. That's good looking ball into the feet of Meyer. Who steers it back to the near post off her line nicely is Kelsey Weiss. Very confident young lady. We had an opportunity to talk with her yesterday before the game. All these uh, young women, uh, very impressive yesterday, and uh, all our uh, interviewing and 
press opportunity with them. And the thing I think that most impresses me about Kelsey Wise is she's always so calm. She has this wonderful steadying factor with the team. You know, you've seen those keepers, Glenn, that are shouting and and they and they and that feeds to the team. There's a nervousness behind that where she's always, even in the moments of panic, she's calming the team down. Yeah, there is a lot of goalkeepers that sometimes are just talking for the sake of talking <laughs> and giving a lot of erroneous information. You got to wonder how much of it is actually uh, taken seriously because it just it's rapid fire. Fields trying to get turned. Virginia Tech will get the throw. Danielle King. It's one back in a good area here by Florida State. Reeves. Dries did a good job to try and break that up. Still Virginia Tech on the ball here. Virginia Tech will get a free kick. Seifers was fouled by Dries, so and Two hard-hitting central midfielders uh, clash in there. Yeah, and that's why Virginia Tech has Seifers in there. They love that she can bang around and tackle and win balls, and she's a ball winner. Here she's getting it back. Notices a 50-50, and that's a freshman for you in there, banging all season long for them. Seifers heads it forward. Fields trying to open up the game. They're going to try to make Fields run here, and she can. Stride for stride with her is Danielle King. Fields cuts back inside now. Top of the box was Brynja's daughter. Seifers now. And almost 20 minutes in, you can see with Reeves, how much she's getting bumped. Every time she's got the ball, they're trying to get an extra bump on her. And in the ACC final game, they were doing the same thing. Florida State was getting under her skin. So a challenge for her tonight will be not to be upset and rattled by that and to stay in the game because that is a game plan for Florida State. Here's good moments here by Tech, Julie, getting possession because they're going to have to have some moments here in this game to, to counter Florida State's possession with some good possession of their own. Yeah, and possession is, is your best way of getting numbers forward. you got to build it to allow time to, to get those outside backs we were talking about. Pressing. And Chugger there talked about wanting to be more aggressive attacking. Ashley Meyer now. That's a nice pocket of space but gave it away. Isabella Schmidt now. Playing away from pressure nicely, Michaela Hahn, who's got three goals, seven assists on the air, and that one's going to miss out. But in full pursuit here is Brynja's daughter, who you can never take an eye off. This Icelandic international, such a dangerous player. And why she's so dangerous is she slips in behind like that. So she comes from that hole in that attacking central midfield spot, and she slips in, and so it's easy to lose track of her. 14 goals, four assists. Mark Krikorian saying, bring your daughter's game elevated this year. Student of the game. She's had four in the NCAA tournament, and she's absolutely been a Virginia Tech killer, scoring three goals against them. Schmidt, a little bit of a two-on-two -two game going on over here. Jamia Fields now. Fields has cut inside nicely. Curls it into the box. Second chance here, shot wide. Opportunity for Thalbert's daughter, who can score in a variety of ways, but not that time. And Fields for Florida State, just having her way on that right side. A lot of space and time if they can switch the ball out to her. And this is the chaos she has been creating. She's physical on the ball, she wins it back, and then she's just gonna drive it in and try and get that near post runner to get a deflection on it. And Brynja's daughter, again, in the mix, all over the field. And Thorvald's daughter, the other Icelandic player, really a look she should get on target. 
Nice header knocked into the channel, coming in there defensively nicely with Schmidt. Good cover laterally behind a center back. And this will go all the way back to the goalkeeper, Kelsey Weiss. Let's go now to the head coach of Virginia Tech, Chugger Dare. Uh, your thoughts on things so far, Chugger? Well, I think we weathered a little bit of a storm where they had set piece after set piece with the long throw and some of the corners. But I think uh, we put a couple of good, uh, good combinations going forward uh, uh, together. So that's good. And we're, uh, we're looking to continue to do that, find our forwards, let them hold it, and uh, find some midfielders and go forward. Chugger, what are you hoping? With the rest of this first half that you can get out of it in terms of possession? Well, I think a little more possession in the Italian third, ideally. Uh, I think we've rushed ourselves a little bit up front, and playing balls first touch that maybe we should settle in and uh, and, and kind of live with a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a good start, um, you know, and we've uh, kept ourselves in the game, and uh, you know, we're going to move forward in the Italian third. Chugger, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck here tonight. Thank you, guys. Yes, Chugger Adair uh, has done a wonderful job third season with Virginia Tech. They got off to a great start in this one. And here's their All-American, Jasmine Reeves. Reeves quickly getting doubled up, turning the corner. What a turn from Reeves. And that turn is going to earn Virginia Tech a very confident building corner kick here as we tick down towards the 22-minute mark. And I thought she had Kyleman beat. She makes the turn. What a nice turn this is. And then that touch, that burst by her. And this is the speed she has. And it shows you just how fast Cassie Kyleman is as well to be able to recover and get a foot on that. Virginia Tech off the corner. Headed back in towards the near post. Weiss will see this out for a goal kick for Florida State. But boy, some individual skill from an All-American striker, Jasmine Reeves, who has shown us uh, she can get turned out of Dover, Delaware. Substitution for Florida State, checking in and wearing number 21, Marta Bukowska Matthews. She'll replace number 16, Carson Pickett. Bukowska Matthews in, Pickett out for Florida State. How about a sub? for Florida State. Marta Barkowska Matthews, eight goals on the season and just on fire as of late. Another international player from England. Uh, two goals versus Notre Dame this year has started on occasion, but kind of considered a bit of a super sub. Two goals and an assist in their last game there, their win over 4-0 win over Boston College. Very technical player. Uh, Mark Corian saying her vision excellent as well, went on a ball. Tiernan will go out for Virginia Tech. Loopy now. So here's a, a bit of this possession also that, you know, allows them to sort of relax and, and take a deep breath here after maybe being put under pressure by Florida State. Yeah, Florida State dropping that front four a bit, dropping into that 4-5-1. So they're giving them that space. The challenge for Virginia Tech, as Chugger said, will be how do you possess in that final third? Ashley Meyer, number 15, their attacking center midfielder, is going to be the key to that one. Shannon Mayrose has come on now for Virginia Tech. Three goals, two assists. Came in up top for Tiernan. And Shannon Mayrose is one of those players you just love coming off the bench because she gives you this boost. She's one of those blue collar grinders. I'm going to bring energy. I'm going to bring a spark. You just love that in a kid coming in. Jordan Coburn now. Danielle King back to Coburn. Nice quick ball out wide here. Antolino now. Plays it forward. Wonderful defending there from Grubka. Campbell. Florida State doing a good job, I think, too, of putting pressure on the ball because, again, Virginia Tech's going to try and look for that long ball over the top to Reeves. And one of the best ways to defend against that is put pressure on ball. So you're not seeing many Virginia Tech players with the opportunity to look up and see, okay, there's space in behind. Got to say, what an exceptional environment here for the NCAA Women's College Cup here in Cary, North Carolina. 
field absolutely pristine, wonderful environment with fans representing all the colleges involved here. There's a youth showcase going on here, so young players have the opportunity to get out here, and your former teammate Brandy Chastain's here as well. Showing off her skills over at Capital One. I said, do you still have skills, B? Oh! She said, easy. So it's gotten pretty measured here, Julie. I think so. You know, and you and you see both teams, Virginia Tech starting so strong, have Alert. weathered their various storms, and you look at the final 20 minutes and think, okay, can we make a run here? Can we slip one in? Offside flag up on Thorsville daughter. He was about three yards in when that ball was delivered behind. The Virginia Tech defense. Young striker, a lot of talent, seven goals, three assists. It's been a youth international for Iceland. And Thorvald's daughter's gonna lead that line for them, constantly trying to get in behind as their sole striker. Dangerous ball in the box. Weiss coming out to get that. 15 shutouts on the year for Weiss. Target there was Ashley Meyer, who many times ends up being a third forward. She's got eight goals on the year. Brynja's daughter tried to slip in her teammate, Thorville's daughter, trying to get there, and quickly off her line is Dale Kolpitz. So the two Icelandic players trying to hook up once again there, playing as one. Kolpitz looked to hesitate just a little bit there and almost cost her. Mayro's called for the foul there on Coleman. It's pretty tough to unnerve this back line of Florida State. And those two center backs, Grubka and Coleman, they're tough. I'm not sure I'd want to go against them. Mark Kerkorian instead of, of Coleman. She doesn't feel pain. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, actually, but... She's from Woodbury, Minnesota, and everybody's uh, pegged her quite obviously as a future pro in the NWSL. Top women's league in the United States currently. Thorvald's daughter. Grubka. And here is Isabella Schmidt, back to Grubka. Picks her head up, plays to the feet of Jamia Fields. Fields has won it back now for Florida State. Mayrose is going to get called for the foul there on Schmidt, who was in a little bit of trouble. We talked about... May Rose bringing a lot of energy, tracking across, trying to get something on Schmidt. Schmidt to take the free kick now. Box is loaded up for Florida State. Seven in and around the penalty area. Straight ball driven in. And second ball will be picked up here. Seifers, who's just going to clear the area. Talk about Isabella Schmidt a little bit now playing as a right back. It's kind of been a little bit defining for Florida State what she brings to that position. Yeah, Kirsten Crowley, the freshman, was there earlier in the season, got injured, and Schmidt, who plays in the midfield as well, stepped in and has been playmaking and attacking from that position. Dangerous opportunity here and providing the cover here. Coming across was Jody Zelenke from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. So another corner for Florida State. They're second of the game. And there is Schmidt from Wangen, Germany. Of course, uh, interestingly enough today, the United States getting drawn <laughs> in group play oh, with Germany. Dear. Tough group. And okay. we'll take a look at that at halftime. Get some thoughts from Julie on the uh, Group G opponents for the United States at the 2014 FIFA World Cup. Top of the box, wide open. 
goes to the far post. It's helped on. I'm just wondering when Florida State's going to start taking advantage of that. Virginia Tech leaving that top of the box wide open there on corner Now, is kicks. Reeves going to get here? No. Smart play from Schmidt, who's going to go right back and safely defuse this to the feet of Weiss. And a player down for Florida State is number six, Megan Campbell. And she looks in a bit of trouble here. And the Florida State left back from Ireland. The both teams now going to their respective benches here. This stoppage here, what does this do for either team, Julie? Well, I think it actually helps because you can, especially for Virginia Tech, who was on its heels a little bit, you can regroup, you can talk about what adjustments you need to make. I mean, you beg for these moments as a player on the field in the craziness of a game, and you try and catch them and throw-ins and goal kicks, but you can never get the whole team together like this. So you can see pulling the teams together and saying, okay, here, here's how we can close out these last 10 minutes. Well, and so many players on Florida State hail from other countries. They really uh, are the United Nations, maybe, of NCAA women's college soccer. And take a look at this, Julie, because this is very interesting. Uh, so much recruiting done here in the United States, supplying so many players. But look where Mark Krikorian okay. goes. I know. It's not surprising, actually, given that he has coached professionally in the United States with a lot of internationals. He coached the under-19 youth national team for the U.S. Eight players from seven different countries, and I think 21 players to come through this program from various countries. Corian has coached the under-19 U.S. national team, also the Philadelphia Charge in the Women's United Soccer Association, which Julie played in. And you know, when you open that pipeline and you have a program that's as well respected and, and Mark Krikorian is well regarded as he is, then other people see they, that they've, they're having success here, they're enjoying it. And you can see why you have a Thorvald's daughter following a Brynja's daughter. And you probably have more daughters coming. Ashley Manning in for Virginia Tech, Crowley in for FSU. King. Over the top. That's not a bad ball. It's turned to defense. Coleman got there, missed it. Shooting opportunity. It's one over Virginia Tech. They have struck first. Ashley Manning, seconds after coming on, has put the Hokies up. Kelsey Weiss is down. And look how a game can change when you had an injury break. All of a sudden, Virginia Tech back in this. Ashley Manning giving a little bit of a push there to get in. Fighting her off. Just trying to find the ball is Coleman. She can't find it. And what a nice finish by Manning to carry that one through. Keep it low so Weiss couldn't get there. But that one took... The Seminoles by surprise. Well, Chugger Adair is going to look like a genius because Ashley Manning had just come in the game. Gets on the end of a ball here, a little nudge on a defender, very subtle. Picking up ball number five of the year. It is 1-0 Virginia Tech. And that's the danger of a break like that. Because a team that was largely fielding corner kicks and these long throws from Campbell and on their heels, Virginia Tech, all of a sudden they can get together, regroup, and look what can happen. Here comes Virginia Tech again. Booed by the enthusiasm of getting the game's first goal. May Rose is in the box. And Grupka had to get a body between her and that ball to prevent that Virginia Tech. Absolutely pumped here right now.
and Kalman is just trying to hold her off. You can see she can't find the ball. A little bit of a nudge by Manning, but I think that's a good no call. Both fighting equally for that. And Kalman really needs to bring that, try and bring that ball down, play it back to her, keep her clear it, but you just couldn't get control of that bouncing ball. Ashley Manning, known for good movement, smart runs, and a bit of gamesmanship there. Tremendous use of the body to just knock a defender off balance, pick up a ball, and go in and score. Response now may be coming here from Jamea Fields. Florida State now on the attack. They'll get the throw. No Megan Campbell for this throw in, so they'll probably take this one shorter. Mayrose tackled in away by Fields. It'll be a throw into Virginia Tech holding a 1-0 lead here. 32nd minute goal. Substitute Ashley Manning off the bench and providing the goal. Don't see Loopy goes off. Rubka switches it. This is Schmidt now, who's moved over to the left-back position. As Crowley has come into the right-back position for Florida State. I think you're going to see Florida State in these last 10 minutes start to press. They're known to send players. Direct off the set piece. That is driven in, but that'll be handled easily by Cole Pitts. So how have both teams reacted to the goal in your eyes, Julie? Well, I think Florida State hasn't panicked, and I think that's pretty typical of them because they've shown this year that they can come back in the final 10 minutes. They can come back from whatever in a game. They've been in more overtime games this season than in any other season. So I think that's to be expected. But Virginia Tech, you can see the, the, the momentum change. All of a sudden, you've got this energy burst out of them. Right, it all came after that stoppage due to an injury. This one's clipped into the box. It's clipped short. Weiss comes out, handles it calmly. One of the nation's top players highlights ESPNU's Big 12 SEC Challenge tonight is Marcus Smart and the Cowboys hosting the Gamecocks. The Big 12 SEC Challenge, South Carolina versus Oklahoma State tonight at 9.30 on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. Fields call for the foul. Jensen was brought down. Here's Jensen again now. Flips it to the far post. Grubka got ahead on it towards the corner flag. And it looked like shoulder to shoulder. It's going to be waved off by the referee, despite the fact the linesman had a flag up. It's Florida State in possession. Again, one back in a dangerous area. Conklin. I find it so interesting in the collegiate game, the way they can sub so much, how their substitution patterns can bring such a change of momentum as well, because you see Mayrose just battling in there. Jensen. Crossing opportunity here for Virginia Tech. It's blocked by Schmidt. You have said it, Julie. All of a sudden, Virginia Tech 
getting a lot of the ball here, providing energy, getting in behind the midfield of Florida State. Buoyed by the energy of the game's first goal. Grubka. King. Jensen knocked it inside. Brynja's daughter will get called for the foul. And there's a confidence to Virginia Tech you didn't see in those first 30. All of a sudden, they're knocking it around a little bit, holding it in that final third. And they got a good supporter section here, too, have made the trip down from Blacksburg. Zelenki delivers. Good, strong defensive header. Coleman got up there. Going to get played back into the box again. And it'll be a free kick, Florida State. Bring his daughter was fouled. And Florida State hasn't even been able to clear it out of their final third. Everything they've been trying to get going back there, miscleared, giveaways. So first priority for them is getting the getting the ball back, holding onto it in possession. Very pensive Mark Krikorian, the head coach of Florida State. Third consecutive College Cup final. Here's Brynja's daughter. Gonna try it from long range. That one will go wide. It'll be a goal kick to Virginia Tech. Tech with three shots out, shooting Florida State with two. Scarpa comes on from Lakeland, Florida. The freshman does get significant minutes for Florida State. Virginia Tech, more from them. Jensen. Still Jensen. Has drawn three now. Out of the middle came Grubka. It'll be a throw into Florida State. A coverage of the Women's College Cup continues with a national championship match Sunday, December 8th at 3 Eastern. It's live on ESPNU. For more information on the 2013 Women's College Cup, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Virginia Tech looking to win their first. Trying to get by Florida State here in the first semifinal. Jensen. Seifers switched it out wide. And Tolino into the box, but right to Weiss. Florida State defensively, it just amazes me how much a game can change. And these last 10 minutes looks like a totally different team. I think for both teams at halftime, if you're Florida State, you say, okay, we've got to send players. We've got to be aggressive. We can't get conservative here. We've got to get that goal back. And if you're Virginia Tech, the tendency when you're up is to start going into the bunker too early. Because you've seen when they can send players and hold the ball and get into their final third with some numbers, they're having success. Jody Zelenki had the assist on the goal from Ashley Manning. But a very dangerous free kick here now on the stroke of halftime for Florida State. They've got targets. Grubka's up there. Coleman is up there. Both center backs in there looking to get ahead on this. That's a good piece of delivery. The header, what a shot, and what a goal. The header is pounded in. Kristen Grubka has tied it up. A timely goal from Florida State here. And this is a situation Virginia Tech should not allow to happen. 
Jonathan, because this player, this is one of the best target players for Florida State and Kristen Grevka. They know she's a player that Florida State's going to be looking to. And look what, no one picks her up. That's a miscommunication with that back line where she is wide open and beautifully finishes the ball because those are easy to fly over that crossbar. But no one on Kristen Grubka and perfect technique to head that into the upper corner. Well, and again, the strong mentality, the strong character comes to life here. Virginia Tech, Weiss will come off her line. So what a response here, because you have to think Trevor Adair and Virginia Tech wanted so desperately to get to halftime with a one goal lead. And both those goals really coming off the run of play. Virginia Tech on its heels before the break, the injury break, they score. And right there, Virginia Tech again, pushing it down Florida State's throat. And what happens? They get a free kick and boom, they're back in it. Nice give and go. Zofel's going to get called for the foul. Uh, number nine, Cassie Coleman. There is no doubt, this is a game Virginia Tech playing like they have nothing to lose here. Manning and Mayrose have been key off the bench here today. And again, Virginia Tech, the only team to beat Virginia this year. They have yet to beat, in their history, Florida State. Marnum Bacasta Matthews gets credited for the assist on the goal from Kristen Grubka. And you can see Virginia Tech's trying to hold its line, but no one even looking at number 13, Kristen Grubka, who is their target. That alongside Kalman. And you can see they're trying to step, but then they dropped one player, kept her on sides. Tremendous diving header. Beautifully timed by Grubka. And there she is. And look, there's no doubt about it. Virginia Tech knows she is the most dangerous weapon in the air. Coming up at the half, take a look at the men's World Cup draw today as, uh, well, we're in the context of the world game today here in Cary. Look ahead to Virginia and UCLA, our second semifinal. Stats and highlights coming up at halftime here on ESPNU. Ashley Manning off the bench in the 32nd minute. Ten minutes later, a wonderful response. Kristen Grubka with a diving header. We are 1-1 here with seconds left here in the first half. Ten, nine, eight. That seven, is going to do it. Six, five. Well, for Florida State, maybe, Julie, uh, momentum reclaimed. Yeah, you go in at halftime and think, okay, we're back in this. What a, a great recovery for Florida State and a beautiful goal by Grubka to get them back in it. Let's go down to uh, the head coach of Florida State University, Mark Krikorian. Mark, thank you for taking the time to join us here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, how important was uh, this response only 10 minutes after going down 1-0? Yeah, I think it was important, uh, but we know it's a 90-minute game, and, uh, you know, if you get down, you just keep working and working and uh, try and fight your way back into it. So, fortunately, we got the, the free kick and uh, executed very well. This is a team that has been responding in that manner all season long. Mark, what will you say to them at halftime for adjustments in the second half? Well, certainly, I think we have to do a better job of changing the point of attack. We're getting the ball on one side and breaking the pressure, and then uh, we're, we're being too impatient just continuing to force it on one side. So if, um, if we can take advantage of swinging the ball and, and getting our outside backs into the game, I think that will uh, certainly serve us well. Mark, thank you very much for your time. Right, Best you of luck in the second half. Thank you. So Mark McCorry wanting some better decisions on the ball. Virginia Tech won, Florida State won. We'll take a break from Cary, North Carolina. Coming up, we examine the United States draw in the World Cup.
It's beautiful, sweetheart. <laughs> Can I help you? Oh, it's our fridge. It's on layaway. Why layaway? Take it home today at Rena Center and pay it off while you enjoy it at home. These spicy chicken sandwiches are addictively spicy. Oh, it's like a flavor roller coaster, right? Yeah, I love roller oh, coasters. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. Amazing! Yeah, let's go again. Whoa. Oh, no! Strap in for a flavorful ride. The original and Island Fire spicy chicken sandwiches. And don't forget holiday mint shakes and molten cake sundaes. This is how you Sonic. The Women's College Cup finale is on ESPNU. The Tar Heels have won the national championship. Which team will take the title and etch its name in history? The NCAA Women's Soccer National Championship, Sunday at 3 on ESPNU. Whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want in one place. NCAA.com cuts through the clutter so you're in control. School pages connect you with your favorite team so you can access highlights and features you won't find anywhere else. And NCAA.com is championship central with unparalleled access across all divisions. Whether at home or on the go, NCAA.com is the home of college sports. Faded bumpers, foggy headlights, weathered, sun-damaged vehicles. Introducing Wipe New, the world's longest-lasting solution for restoring and protecting your vehicle. And we guarantee it to last for years. We applied Wipe New to the driver's side of this vehicle. We then sent this car through over 100 powerful car washes. Wipe New never faded or washed away, proving that the results will last for years of real-world environmental experience. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it, Brando. I got it about two years old, and I've never seen it shine like this. Don't spend a fortune on temporary fixes. Order now, and we'll double the size. That's enough for two cars. There's still more. Order now and get the Pro Detailing Kit with the Headlight Applicator Bonus. Just pay separate shipping and processing. Order now and get it all, plus a two-year guarantee. To get your Wipe New Detailing Kit, call 1-800-710-3523. Wipe New comes with a two-year money-back guarantee. So call 1-800-710-3523 today. Earlier today in Brazil with the world watching. USA. USA in Group G with Germany and Ghana. G4. 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 Ghana, USA. Well, tons of reaction here in the United States to their grouping in Group G, and it is a very difficult group. Julie, what are your thoughts? I think Group G should stand for good God because that's <laughs> what the United States is facing. Germany, everyone knows. Portugal with Cristiano Ronaldo. Ghana, who has knocked the U.S. out of the last two World Cups. And they have to travel almost 9,000 miles in Brazil. If there is a silver lining, it's that they face, if they can get through the United States, they face a weaker Group H. Germany, Portugal, one. Ghana, all teams the U.S. have played in past World Cups. The storylines abound. More from the Women's College Cup. Three goals a game. No one is even close to that three goals, over three goals a game average. And then on the other side for UCLA, only seven goals allowed the entire season. And that back line, that junior, bunch of juniors for UCLA, and Caitlin Rowland and goal is keeping them strong. A great second match coming up, but FSU and Virginia Tech, one more half to go here in Cary, North Carolina. We'll take a look at first half highlights when we return. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. And in part by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual back here in Cary, North Carolina. A first half yielding two goals. Virginia Tech 
and Florida State in this first semifinal tied at one. And welcome back, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis, alongside me, former U.S. Women's National Team captain, Olympic gold medal winner, Julie Foudy. Uh, talk about this, because Virginia Tech said they wanted to come out in this one with, with a good energy. They got it through Jasmine Reeves. They did right away. They got that first look, Tiernan turns they play her in here's the first half highlights and this was early on this is one of the first plays in the game you can see the rhythm is good and unlucky for reeves she doesn't get a foot on it but florida state then responds they come back they get a little bit momentum and you can see they got really unlucky here because that could have easily gone in the goal or been a handball called on seifers but virginia tech after that little break the momentum shifted, and boy, did Ashley Manning hustle that one through. Gives a little nudge, a nice little sequence play by Virginia Tech, and she gets calm and off balance, unable to bring that ball down, and does a nice job of slipping that one near post around Weiss, who come out and cut down the angle quite well, and what a good finish that is. Good response, though, 10, 10 minutes later. And this is where Virginia Tech gets itself in trouble, because Grubka is gonna stay on sides, they pull all the way up to the top of the box, which is a high restraining line, and you gotta go with her if you're gonna pull that high up. And what a nice finish for Grubka. Wide open, and she puts that one away. Diving header there, absolutely unbelievable. Take a bite out of these stats, Julie. And you can see it's pretty even overall. I think Florida State getting a little bit of that momentum back in the first half. We'll see how they can carry that through in the second half. All right, here we go. Virginia Tech in maroon. Florida State in white. Second half game on here in Cary, North Carolina for a trip to the NCAA championship game. Virginia Tech trying to pick up where they left off. But boy, the timeliness of that goal from Mark Kerkorian's Florida State University, only 10 minutes after Virginia Tech had taken the lead. So important to tie things up at halftime. Especially because they were on their heels. Virginia Tech was pressing, they were getting their confidence in. And all of a sudden, it's what I love about soccer, how that game can just change. Sugar Adair, looking for the first time ever to try and get a victory over Nemesis Florida State. You'll see Virginia Tech, they put two players, target players, right on the goalkeeper. They're going to try and muddy the waters right in that goal mouth. The footed ball towards the six. Comes into the box. There's a foul called. It'll be a free kick for Florida State. Chugger Adair, his third season, he was an associate head coach for five years. Also an assistant at UC Santa Barbara. And after talking to all four coaches yesterday, both Julie and I, uh, we both walked away really impressed with how dedicated these coaches are, how enthusiastic they are about their programs. And about winning a national title. <laughs> Virginia Tech would be the first in the school's history for any program. Fields. Tried to slip a ball inside. Cyphers. They also talked about Virginia Tech in particular, the support they've been receiving. Coach Beamer giving them the ball, the football from the UVA Virginia Tech game, a police escort leading them out. Yeah, it certainly is growing the attention and awareness of the women's soccer program. Cyphers with a header there uh, falling back. Still Virginia Tech in possession. You heard Mark Krikorian tell us at halftime he wants to see the point of attack switched here much quicker by Florida State here in the second half. And they were having success in the beginning of that first half, finding those flanks and finding that space out wide. And then they lost their rhythm a bit. I think losing Morgan Campbell midway through to that injury, it's good to see her back on the field at that left back position. With Schmidt back at that right back position is gonna steady them a bit. Ball just cushioned down there beautifully by Zelenki. Virginia Tech gets the throw. Again, the clock hits 
ticks down here in the second half. Unlimited substitution. If you're subbed out, you can re-enter once. So substitution patterns can always play a part in how your team performs and gets a result in the second half. Very dangerous Jamia Fields. Three goals, eight assists on the year. Ball clipped into the box. Second ball falls right to the feet of Virginia Tech, but the shot is errant. That one coming from number 22, Morgan Conklin. And you can see Chugger Adair has gone with some of the players up front, May Rose, Conklin, that he typically brings in in the first half off the bench. Still resting Reeves and Tiernan. Perhaps hoping for a big finale. Fresh legs. King steps up to win it for Virginia Tech. And again, we can't say this enough. Virginia Tech has never beaten Florida State in 14 matches. And there is a good look at a first-team All-American, Jasmine Reeves, being arrested at the moment by Virginia Tech head coach Chugger Adair. Campbell knocked it forward. There's Campbell again. Nice sharp ball inside. Three is Dries. Seven assists out of Wayne, New Jersey. Switches the point of attack. Here's Schmidt now. This looks more promising for Florida State. Nice diagonal run. Brynja's daughter showing that movement and mobility around the penalty area. Tolino played it forward. Good patience there by May Rose to recognize I have no one in front of me. We need to hold the ball a little bit more. I'm going to hold it up and just find and connect with someone. Antolino switches it. Played wide by Coburn. So how about some confidence through passing right now for Virginia Tech? Can they penetrate more? Bad loss of possession in a bad area to the wrong player. Brynja's daughter. Fields. Can they up the tempo here? Dries. Tackled away. It'll trickle all the way back to the goalkeeper, Colpitz. Dagny Brynja's daughter looking around saying, who's going to join me with the party <laughs> in that counterattack? Fields trying to catch up with her, but all she had was Thorval's daughter. Is there just that little bit of sharpness maybe lacking today, Julie, from, from Florida State? Is it a day where stars could align for Virginia Tech? I actually credit Virginia Tech for the pressure they're putting on her, for being organized. Well, here they are again. Good diagonal run. Meyer lays it back, swung into the box, the header, what a save! Picking it out of the corner, Kelsey Weiss, after a wonderful buildup from Virginia Tech. And what a save by Kelsey Weiss, going into that post. She recognizes it, parries it across, but a nice play again by Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech off the corner here. Flipped into the box. Weiss again has to help it on. Conceding another corner. So living up to it right now in goal for Florida State, Kelsey Weiss, who has a 0.48 goals against average. Zelenki comes to take the corner for Virginia Tech. Two players on Weiss. They're going to try and muddy it again. Into the six. Missed the punch. Ball still loose. And a huge breakout here. 
Rupka was trying to be a one-woman show, the center back. Good pace. I, I like that. She was running like a striker. I love it when center backs go. Virginia Tech alive and living up to the moment here in the semifinals against a team they've never beaten. Conklin's ball is going to be two straight. Weiss is going to see it out for a goal kick. You mentioned earlier, Glenn, are, is Florida State maybe not as sharp? Possibly, but I actually think Virginia Tech is doing a good job of closing them down. They're not finding that space in the flanks like they were earlier in the first half. They're organized on that back line. Both coaches made a real emphasis to us yesterday about the wide game, about winning the wide game. Who do you give the edge to so far? So far in this second half, I give it to Virginia Tech. And I think the problem for Florida State is when you can't hold the ball, it doesn't give in a 4-5-1, it doesn't give you the time to get those outside backs involved. And so you find that you have few attacking options with only that one point player. Here's Weiss, the confident to come forward, drives it forward. Free kick now for Florida State here as we tick down towards the 34 minute mark. Mark Krikorian has guided this team to being national contenders on a daily basis. Behind him there, Wes Hart played in Major League Soccer for the Colorado Rapids, one of his assistants. Weiss, it's driven in. It's Coleman. Stumbled over it at the top of the box. It's going to be a free kick. Weiss for looking for Tech. her, the goalkeeper for Florida State, looking for her seventh career assist. I love when she steps up and takes those. She can drive a ball like few can. Since Julie, that the, the aggressive nature, the lack of time that Virginia Tech's given. Uh, we'll get back to that in a minute because what a throw this is. Brynja's daughter is in. He's going to square it back. What a goal off the thrower. Fields has pounded it in. Spectacular moment from Florida State who catch Virginia Tech unaware off a throwing. And again, Virginia Tech knowing Megan Campbell, similar to Kristen Grubka, knowing she's a target on set pieces. Got to know that this is what she brings to the game. Number six for Florida State. That throw in is a set piece weapon. And Dogney, Virginia's daughter, knows it. Virginia Tech caught sleeping. Virginia's daughter takes that look. And what a nice finish by Jamia Fields on that back post. And gosh, to have that in your arsenal is something because you can just put it on a dime. And on the other hand, you got to say you got caught mentally there yeah, because it's not as though they don't know about this long throw. Exactly. If you're Chugger Adair, coach of Virginia Tech, you're thinking those are two preventable goals on set pieces that we should have been defending properly. Yeah, who would have thought Florida State would get brought back into this game via the throw in? You can see why Campbell has 13 assists this season to lead the team. And when she went off in that first half, the game changed. So Virginia Tech now will get a set piece. It's hit straight. It's dropped, there'll be a free kick. Weiss was fouled. And let's also talk about Brynja's daughter because she made the run to get the throw and the ball she squared was absolutely perfect to Fields. Yeah, and one of the things when you look at 
the good players versus the great players, you look at transition. That is, to me, is everything in a player. Who is anticipating when the rest of the team is sleeping, the one player moving on that, Brynja's daughter. She knows Campbell's gonna get it to her, she's moving ahead of the play, and boom, you're in. Jamia Fields on the opposite side of the field with her as well. I mean, it could have easily been just Brynja's daughter moving. Yeah, that was a woman thinking on another level. And you can see almost everyone just caught napping there for Virginia Tech. Because they know that's one of the things they scout. Everyone knows Campbell's got that long throw in. And by the way, that was an incredible look from behind her. And I mean, that's the accuracy of, of an NFL quarterback there. Throwing has become such a big weapon in the game worldwide now, Julie. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? I know it was a good thing on that play for Florida State, but it does change the game dramatically these days. Just build up to it. There's the long it. walk to it. It's another it. element that teams have to be aware of. So Virginia Tech has got to dig deep here now. I used to have a player on my San Diego Spirit team in the former WSA that could do the flip throw and she could zing it in Kim pick up we call it the pick flip uh, then that's when you love it feels a bit slow to get up and how about the run from fields to get into the box a wide midfielder to become a striker and a target to hit that go-ahead goal Reeves has come back in for Virginia Tech now so they bring their all-american striker on And they're going to need her to lead the charge to get back into this game. Let's go, geez! And Tolino into the box. You know, and that throw, and interestingly enough, at that time, Virginia Tech really controlling the game, Julie. I know, again, again against the run of play for Florida State. And that's a sign, I think, of of a good team is even when they're not playing to their potential there's not a lot of panic amongst them and it's a sign that you got some game changers when you have a, a Brynja's daughter on the field you know the potential there is to get something on goal and what I like about that goal is when she looked up she's finding her player how many players when they make that turn on the inline just try and lash it across she picked out fields and finished it nicely And it's so funny, at that moment, I was about to talk about how Virginia Tech has sort of broken the rhythm of Florida State, and lo and behold, they pull off this spectacular goal. To the back post it goes, Brynja's daughter now again, the Icelandic international, fends off a challenge, looking for support. Gets it from Michaela Hahn. Nicolette Dries knocks it back. And now the wonderful passing game of Florida State could be so effective clicked on header not much on that one easily handled there after Fordsville daughter making the run into the box we've talked a lot about how Florida State has responded to those to being down be interesting to see how Virginia Tech now responds It's a night where the set piece has taken center stage here. Two goals for Florida State off a free kick and a long throw-in. There's Harry Reeves, the father of Jasmine Reeves, uh, hoping that uh, the Virginia Tech Hokies can get back in this one. A large contingent of Hokie fans right below us here in the booth. And something Virginia Tech didn't have much success in was getting Reeves in behind. She only had actually one touch in behind in that first half. Can they play her over the top and utilize some of that speed? last 30 minutes 
It's going to be a free kick for Virginia Tech. Foul on Carson Pickett. I'm not sure how that can be a foul myself. Yeah, it looked pretty good. So first prerequisite here for Virginia Tech is get the ball back. And, and get those numbers and get that attack going again. Because when they were shooting those outside backs and they were getting involved in the midfield, it's a different group. Candace Seifers, the uh, very talented holding midfielder for Chugger Darren, Virginia Tech is down. It's a vital role she plays for this team as a shield for the back four. Virginia Tech, a team that does not have any captains. They beat UMBC, West Virginia, Santa Clara on penalty kicks, and then Duke to get here to the NCAA College Cup. Again, another captive yeah. moment for coaches to talk to players. Yeah, and, and I like that you could see Chugger Adair from the sideline saying, get in here. Let's use this as a moment. We saw what happened last time Virginia Tech did that. They came out and scored a goal. And here's another look. That's where Seifers comes in. And it looks like as she was flying in for the tackle, and that's where the call is made on that that final lunge by Pickett. But it looks like when she came in, it got caught on the grass a little bit. You can see there. Now let me take you back to ankle. something Chugger Adair told us yesterday. He said, you know, our team shape against Florida State is going to be vital. And if you look at that, you have to say it's been pretty good, Jewel. Where do you think it's been today? Because look, they've given up two goals off set pieces, essentially. Right, right. I was just going to say, outside of, of those two moments, you haven't seen much of Brynja's daughter. You haven't seen much of Thorvald's daughter. And I think they got caught on those two instances, which as a, a coach must drive you nuts because those are two that you've scouted over and over. Let's take a look at the goals here. Starting in the 32nd minute, Virginia Tech would stun Florida State. And this is a nice ball in. And you can see Manning just fight through that. Kalman unable to bring it down. And then the response. Grabka wide open, onside in the 42nd minute to get that one. The critical equalizer right before halftime. And then this, knowing Campbell has that long throw. Brynja's daughter on a perfectly placed ball to field on the back post who finishes it clinically. There it is. Manning, Grubka, Jamia Fields in the 57th. It's 2-1. to one. Florida State trying to get to their second NCAA Women's College Cup final. Schmidt is out for FSU. Crowley on. Loopy comes on for Seifers. So they're going to have to uh, adjust without a wonderful holding midfielder. Virginia Tech. Here's Han. Nice change of direction here. Dries. Fields has won it back. He's got the game's go ahead goal. Here we go. Coverage of the Women's College Cup continues with a national championship match Sunday, December 8th at 3 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPNU. For more information on the 2013 Women's College Cup, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. What's wonderful about this cup is that somebody's going to win it for the first time. It's quite crazy, actually, when you think about it. UCLA is in its ninth College Cup. This is the seventh for Florida State. 
and the dominating teams that Virginia has had over the years. This is only their second college cup, which I thought was crazy. 22 years since they've been there. That was back at my time, Glenn. <laughs> it's been that long. Well, Virginia's got a lot of expectation on them in the uh, second semifinal here tonight against a very dangerous UCLA. Dale Colpitz, the goalkeeper for Virginia Tech. Both these goalkeepers in this one here tonight conceding less than a goal a game. Grubka stepped up. Had that vital game tying header. Later, self out flat, diving header to tie things up at one. Only 10 minutes after Virginia Tech took the lead after a goal from Ashley Manning. And here's huge space on the right side now. Brynja's daughter, who's got her head up. We'll clip it to the far post. Nobody making the run over everybody who made their runs to the near post. And this is where Brynja starter makes a mark on a game. 25 minutes left. There's fatigue playing a factor now. And she's still all over the field on all three lines. And especially as Virginia Tech starts to attack, they're going to leave themselves open to that. As they get a little bit more exposed, sending some outside backs forward. King got caught up on that one. Megan Campbell, here it comes again. The long throw. You hear the oohs and ahs from the crowd just on the distance she gets. It'll be a free kick, Virginia Tech here, who's got to find something and some inspiration here. The distance she can get on that. And pinpointed. Coleman got ahead on it. Fields, good control in midfield now. And it's tucked in from that wide area. So the game now with two to one Florida State lead has all of a sudden kind of hit a little bit of a lull here. If I'm Florida State, I don't mind that. Muriel Tiernan knocked it inside, but it's Florida State now. Here is Kristen Grubka from Melbourne, Florida. Bad giveaway, and it's to the wrong person. Jasmine Reeves. She has got pace. Reeves now. Reeves is shot off the post and into the grateful arms of goalkeeper Kelsey Weiss. you can do when you have pace like this Reeves facing up and saying I am gonna take this myself doesn't even try and get around that defender gets a little bit of a gap almost slides it in a bit unlucky there why sliding over and the post becoming her best friend for Weiss what a moment it goes back to that matchup you talked about too, Reeves and Coleman and uh, as any center back knows, that's a, a moment where your heart is skipping a few beats when a striker like that is running at you. Especially if you're a player with my type of pace, maybe less so with Coleman. <laughs> I can remember the days when in practice, Mia would turn and run at me and be like, I really shouldn't be in this position. <laughs> this is not good. And, and when you have a player like that, that stretches a game, they, they should be looking for that flighted ball over the top. Can she create something? Look what happened with Manning in the first goal for Virginia Tech. Bukowska Matthews has come back on for Florida State. Ticking down towards 22 minutes left here. Chugger Adair wondering if his team can produce something special here. And I think as you get into these final 20 minutes, teams like Florida State, they want to 
hold the ball, they want to possess, they want to kill the game a little bit, but you have to be careful not to get too casual. Good aggressive work in midfield has won it back for Virginia Tech. Common, the All-American, gets up, heads it away. Yeah, it's interesting, Mark Kikorian, you know, he says, look, this isn't one of my most athletic teams I've had, but he goes, it's just a great balance of athleticism, soccer smarts, technical skills. Shows you maybe the shift in the college game these days, Julie. And I think it, it helps as well to have that international flavor and that sophistication. Virginia Tech is going to have to find some urgency pretty soon here because uh, they're ticking down towards 20 minutes left. 2-1 to one, Florida State over Virginia Tech. Third meeting of the year for these two teams who know each other so well from the ACC. Bad giveaway here. Square back into the box. Han did a good job of coming back defensively, doing some of that unsung work in central midfield here today. Jamia Fields gets a tackle in. It'll be a throw in to Virginia Tech. So we'll go back to October 24th, it was 2-1 Florida State over v Virginia Tech, and then November 10th in the ACC Championship, 1-0 right here in Cary. And that 2-1 loss, Virginia Tech says that second half they felt like should have been theirs. They outshot them, I think, 8-1. But again, Brynja's daughter, number seven for Florida State, in the mix of that, scores the game winner with just a few minutes left. Zelenki knocks it forward, but no one there. Here's Kalman now. Megan Campbell. Han. Oh, what a wonderful touch with the outside of her foot from Han. Thorval's daughter keeps it alive, and now Florida State is finding a bit of a rhythm here via the pass. Dries. Fields. The power of being in possession on display right now in controlling a game. Bad giveaway from Campbell. And this is an opportunity now for Virginia Tech. Meyer. Look at deflection. I think you, those are the opportunities you just have to create something out of. You've got about a 3v3 look there. And I think for Virginia Tech right now, they look fatigued to me. I'm not seeing that urgency. They're not pressing. And Reeves and Tiernan sat the first 15 minutes of this half and the, the 20 minutes of the first half as well. So those are some fresh legs. I want players out there busting and running and winning that ball back. You've got less than 20 to make a difference in this game. And there's Jasmine Reeves again. Her best opportunity came on a loss of possession and she ran right at the heart of the Florida State defense. Megan Campbell will look to deliver this. Flips it in. It drops right to the feet of the person you don't want it to drop to. Brynja's daughter with a chance to finish Virginia Tech off. Pulls her shot wide. And you can see the look on her face. She is. She knows that was a gift that dropped right at her feet. You don't get many looks like that. No pressure, almost too much time. And she knows that's one that would have put this game away and probably out of reach for Virginia Tech. Good look from the goal cam there. From behind Dale Colpitz.
Another free kick now. This one conceded by Antolino. Similar spot to what we saw in Florida State's first goal. We'll get a look on. Now again, are they? Are they? Kristen Grubka. Kowska Matthews. This time they play a short one towards the end line. This is set up nicely, but the delivery at the far post trying to pick out Brynja's daughter just a bit high, but a well-worked free kick. Very nicely worked, and you can see that's something they've been working on. Campbell, when she gets out there, no one goes with her, and they say, why not? She's having a nice game, Megan Campbell. Shannon Mayrose comes back on now for Jensen for Virginia Tech, and she uh, stirred the game up in the first half. Fields. This is Han. Give away again. Better pressure by Virginia Tech, though. Bodies flying everywhere. Going to be a yellow card. Issued to number 17, Taylor Antolino. I think you could have called the Reeves nudge a foul as well, but clearly a foul coming in on the second one. So long direct ball. That'll have to be dealt with here by FSU, and that's a good ball. It's forced the goalkeeper off her line. Ball is spilled. The delivery prompted Kelsey Weiss off her line for Florida State. Again, it's lumped into the penalty area by Virginia Tech. Second ball is going to be picked up by Florida State. Less than 15 minutes left in this one. Reeves. First team All-American Reeves. And you can see, boy, everybody feeling very dangerous when she gets on the ball in and around the penalty area. And I like that every time Reeves is getting the ball, she's looking to get in the box. She's penetrating in the box. Because good things come from that. You can maybe draw a foul, get the penalty kick. And when you got pace like that, take on every opportunity you can get. to say about Florida State I, I think in the image of their coach they really don't seem to get rattled <laughs> no it's very Mar Mark Krikorian like <laughs> agreed Vogel's daughter knocks it back Fields now has found some space here on the right side she's isolated one on one Fields to the end line. Strength power gets dragged down just outside the box. It's going to be a free kick. Tremendous run there from Jamia Fields, who has the game winning goal at the moment for Florida State. And this is a matchup I would take for these last 15 minutes. Get the ball to Jamia Fields. I think Danielle King is getting a little fatigued on that left side, the left back for Virginia Tech. And she is having her way when she can get in on that right side. So Fields uh, cramping up here. Look there at Daniel King. All right, let's take a look at the goal from Jamia Fields. It came off a long throw in and some wonderful work uh, from Brynja's daughter. 
And this is the Campbell factor. Virginia's daughter recognizing Virginia Tech wasn't playing it deep enough, and what a nice ball. And Fields just makes that look easy. Coming across her body, keeping it nice and low. So she is off. This is a very dangerous free kick here. It's curled to the back post. In towards the six. Still not cleared, and now finally cleared by Virginia Tech. Here comes the long throw in again. Campbell in the box. Thorville's daughter over the top. So what I'm going to do, Julie, is take you back to that throw-in. You see all the time it took for Megan Campbell to take that? Could that be considered time-wasting? That's one of the things I don't like about all these long throws because there's this big dramatic build-up to them, and everybody walks over to take them, takes their time, gets a towel, rubs the ball down, you know. <laughs> you, could, you could hear the Virginia Tech fans shouting for that to add minutes, but I, yes, I agree with you. I think that is way too long, and it disrupts the rhythm of the game. I would say add another 30 seconds. She's running across the field. She's taking her time, uh, you know, and it happens at all different levels. Pro game as well. I retire when I see Barcelona start doing long throw-ins. <laughs> Florida State now trying to get a third. That was behind Thorville's daughter. Beautiful ball out wide here. Four players in front of the ball for Virginia Tech. They may be in here. Shot. They have tied it up. Spectacular fashion. And well done by Virginia Tech to get that midfield forward. That's a center midfielder, Ashley Meyer, breaking through and having the presence of mind. I thought she was going to drive it across because she had three runners in the box coming with her, making it in there. Why shutting down the angle again? Quite well, but she just nicks it in near post. And as a goalkeeper, you know that is killing her to get beat twice on that near post. Ninth goal of the year for Meyer from Strongsville, Ohio, maybe the biggest in her career. It is now 2 2. And you go back to that Brinius daughter opportunity, which would have put him up 3 to 1 and would have iced this game. Is there a game winner left here? Here's Hall now. I make that Michaela Hahn. Virginia Tech has now found a little bit of life. Jasmine Reeves. Reeves is off and running here. So sound defensively here tonight have each conceded two goals. Well, Florida State, take a look at this. They've scored 16 goals this season.
from the 80th minute on. So they uh, are known for late theatrics, the late, late show, and it could happen and, here in Cary. And 13 of those 16 have either tied or won the game. I mean, that's how critical they have been in those final 10 minutes. So this game is far from over. Brynja's daughter, number seven, has been in and around it all day. Here comes the long throw in again. It's hoisted into the box, and it'll be a free kick for Virginia Tech. Coleman was in there. It's only the second time this year that Florida State has given up more than one goal, which is mind-boggling. And you know the other impressing fact, impressive fact is Virginia Tech, with the history they've had against Florida State, in 14 tries, they've only tied them once. They, it's really, they beat them on penalty kicks, but they call it a tie. But in 14 times in the history of their program, and yet they're in there battling and not conceding. Virginia's daughter had made a deeper run. Watch out, because this is Jasmine Reeves now, showing up on the left side of the field. And look how quickly Jamia Fields comes back to help defend, knowing the danger. Reeves. Carson Pickett now. Gliding forward. Switches it to Fields. Good ball from Pickett. Fields now. Shakes off one, leaves one trailing. Ball comes into the box. Off the post, it goes in. It crosses the line. It crosses the great divide. Fields has come up with something special here to put Florida State up 3-2. to two. Living up to that graphic we just put up. Another late, late show from the Seminoles. And again, from that right side, Fields has been so effective. They don't put any pressure on her. She gets around, has too much space, I think, to serve that, and is looking to back post. I can't think she's looking to, to, to find the back post in the net. I think she was looking to cross it. And so unlucky for Cole Pitts. She may be saying shot, cross, whatever. It goes in. She came into this game with three goals on the year. She gets two tonight. Less than eight minutes left here. Let's see what Virginia Tech can do. I think she has been so impressive on that right side. Here's Reeves against Coleman. This is trouble, Reeves. Trying to come out of there. Reeves spills both. Brynja's daughter in Coleman. And this is how unlucky Cole Pitts is. It bounces off the post, off her back, and in to the goal. 17th time that Florida State has scored after the 80th minute. You can see the anger on Jasmine Reeves' father's face from the stands, and you could see Jasmine herself shaking her head. She doesn't think that was a foul, because she comes in here and again, Kalman having a hard time clearing it. She comes over the ball a little bit there. Bring his daughter, flicks it forward here. If you would have told me five goals were going to be scored in this game between these two teams, I wouldn't have <laughs> believed you. Both these games came into this game conceding 
well less than a goal a game. Off the Reeves, it'll be a goal kick. It'll be an opportunity for Florida State to milk the clock here. Ashley Manning beat Cassie Coleman for the game's first goal. It's flicked on. Fields, knocks it wide. Schmidt. Kayla Hahn, boy, she had a nice pocket of space there to play somebody in. Here's another look from the goal cam of that goal. And this is how unlucky you can be in this game. Cole Pitts trying to cover it on that far post. And it bounces in off her back. And for Virginia Tech, you're looking at that clock. And you're thinking, OK, five minutes. We got to press here. We got to take some chances. We're going to start flighting balls, flighting numbers in there. Chugger Adair knows it. Doesn't matter if you lose 4-2, 5-2. Time to take some risk. Cole Pitts. Pickett, wonderful control there. Bring you still And good work coming back to win it back for Virginia Tech from Taylor and Tolino. Coleman, the center back for Florida State, doing a wonderful job of picking off that first ball. Nothing getting flicked onto a Reeves who's running through. Virginia Tech now trying to carve at least one more chance out. Tonight, Jamia Fields, her first multi-goal game in her career. And it's got Florida State in pole position here, ticking down towards the three-minute mark to get in to the NCAA College Cup Final to take on the winner of UCLA and Virginia. Still time here for Virginia Tech. And for Virginia Tech, so much of that play has to go through Tiernan to flick on or someone posting up there. Because right now, Grubka and Kalman are eating up every ball that comes to the middle. Five players pushing real high here for Virginia Tech. Trying to win a second ball here. That's a flick on. That's maybe going to turn a defense. Jasmine Reeves is there. She heads it on. One back. Here's Reeves. Kind of slipped and fell to ground. Pickett. Good person to get on the ball here because Pickett's very useful finding people and just pushed towards the corner flag. And there's Florida that play, State. and that's Tiernan with that flick. You can see the Reeves run on. Two minutes left. That is every ball I would be sliding into Tiernan and saying, run, Reeves. Florida State working on their second appearance in a College Cup final. It's their third consecutive year here. Still seeking out their first national championship under Mark Krikorian. 
Virginia Tech, though, continuing to push. Rubka with a big defensive header here. Bukowska Matthews now. It gets lobbed back into the box again. It's a dangerous ball. Top of the box. Reeves off the crossbar. Unbelievable drama here. With about a minute left, the All-American Jasmine Reeves beat everything but the woodwork. That's twice tonight for Jasmine Reeves. And this is the danger of just a ball floating in. She picks it up so nicely, and what a great look that is. Another unlucky bounce for Virginia Tech. And that's the second one for her tonight. Remember the first one that hit the, the side post. Well, it may be less than 30 seconds away here. This is not going to come easy for Florida State. And there'll be some real questions to answer here, despite a win here tonight, if they can hold on. But Virginia Tech continues to push. Colpitz has got to knock this forward as quick as possible. Forward it comes. It's flicked on. Florida State win it back. They are going to the NCAA Women's College Cup Final, courtesy a late goal from Jamea Fields. It is the Late Late Show once again for the Seminoles, 3-2 over Virginia Tech. And what a performance by both teams and their ability to fight back, to call back. Reeves getting unlucky, the bounce off Cole Pitts. I think Virginia Tech is going to have a lot of tears, but they also have a lot to be proud of in this game and their season so far. That'll do it. Three to two, a five goal thriller here in the NCAA Women's College Cup first semifinals as we take a look at the brackets here. Coming up next, it's a good one. Virginia and UCLA, but Florida State has gotten to the final. They will await the winner of the Cavaliers and the Bruins. I don't know if we can beat that one. Go ahead. It'll be tough to beat, but Virginia and UCLA, well, they're primed for their second match here in Cary. Once again, the final score, Florida State, 3-2 over Virginia Tech for Julie Foudy and our entire crew. I'm Glenn Davis. Sports Center U with Anish Schroff is next, and we'll see you back here shortly to wrap up our first semifinal. Out of football, you could appreciate late drama. Hey, I'll give you a wow on that one. I mean, I, I, wow. I don't know a lot about soccer other than I know that's not how it's supposed to end, but it did. <laughs> That's how it ended. Florida State uh, knocking off Virginia Tech. If you missed any of the game, here's how it unfolded. These two going head-to-head. -head. Cary, North Carolina, the site of the College Cup. First half, Florida State down 1-0. Free kick. Kristen Grubka using the header. And she scores. Ties the game at 1. Second half, same score. Florida State now with it. Megan Campbell. Dagny Brinja's daughter. The assist to Jamia Fields. Two to one Seminoles. It stayed that way until with about 11 and a half to go in the second half. Virginia Tech's Ashley Meyer, the equalizer, all square at two. 2-2 two -two game, less than eight minutes to go. Fields, watch this shot. That's a heck of a kick right there. Need a little help. If they're all this exciting, I'll watch more soccer. And then Jasmine Reeves here. Oh, the crossbar. I feel your pain. Florida State hangs on for a 3-2 win, and the Seminoles on to the final. They will face either UCLA or Virginia. That's the next game here on ESPNU, less than 45 minutes away. UCLA making its ninth trip to the College Cup. Virginia, the nation's top offense, the only team in the country averaging more than three goals per game. We'll get you back out.